This is an interview at Days Inn, Hicksville, New York, 20th of November, 2003, approximately 10.45 a.m. Interviewers are Mike Russert and Wayne Clark. Could you give me your full name, date of birth, and place of birth, please? John P. Tolsky. Uh, six, uh, June 24, 1922, born in Roslyn Heights, New York. Okay. What was your educational background prior to entering service? High school. Okay. Just high school. All right. Um, do you remember where you were and your reaction when you heard about Pearl Harbor? Yes. As a matter of fact, my wife and I were at a movie. We weren't married then, actually, but mm -hmm. we were at a movie in Glen Cove. And uh, I had, I remember, there was an intermission, and I went downstairs to get candy or something. And one of the fellows at the candy counter asked me, were you ready to go into the service? He said, I said, for what? He said, well, he, uh, we just bombed Pearl Harbor. They just bombed Pearl Harbor. Mm -hmm. And when I went back upstairs, I can remember <clears throat> Uh, telling my wife, and then they flashed on the screen that all servicemen report back to their their stations, you know. Uh -huh. And that was my first introduction to Pearl Harbor. Do you remember your feelings at all about it, or? Well, I didn't know too much about it uh -huh. at that time. You know, this was all. There was but no, you didn't even know where Pearl Harbor was. No, no, <laughs> and and it was you know uh, all radio, <laughs> no yes, television, yes, and nothing right. visual that you could see or anything uh -huh. like that. But I, I can remember very definitely mm -hmm. about that. Now I noticed that you worked at Grumman yes. prior to entering service. When, when, when did you start at Grumman? I started there probably, uh, <coughs> I there's, think there's probably, water there. Uh, I think I started there in December or whatever. Before. I don't, I, I'll, I'll be honest with you, I don't really remember. Mm -hmm. How long did you but, work but there? I worked there for... Uh, I went from Grumman into the service. Mm -hmm. I left Grumman. Mm -hmm. Now, what did you do at Grumman? I, we was uh, uh, riveting. We were doing the leading edge of the TPFs at that time. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, could you have, were you drafted or enlisted? No, I enlisted. Could you have not gone into service because of that being a defense industry? Uh, I was told that, you know, mm -hmm. but I was, you know, I, was, I, I wanted to go in. That was it. Mm -hmm. and, uh, Grumman at the time we were working to say from uh, my uncle and I were partners we were you know we were doing the riveting and we would he and I were partners and we worked it over at Bethpage here for a while until they opened a plant in Port Washington mm -hmm. and he and I went over there because we lived close by and we went there and then uh, later on it came bigger and bigger and bigger mm -hmm. and they, they really blew up the plant and we uh, um, that's what I, I uh, we would start work at say uh, 7.42 in the morning and didn't get out of here until 11 o'clock at night. Mm -hmm. And it was just go to work, go home, go to work, you know. Mm -hmm. Now how much I, did you get paid to work there, do you recall? I, I, I think it was like probably 65 cents an hour or something mm -hmm. like that. Did they give you overtime too? Oh yeah, that was, that, that was it. It was, you know, 4 o'clock they'd come around and say, do you want to work? And, and we worked, you know, we worked, if, if I didn't work, my uncle wouldn't be able to work, so we, you know, and I just got tired of it, and I, I, I wanted to go into service. Every time you went to the movies, you saw, uh, they would play the music, you know, the Marine, the mm -hmm. Army, <laughs> and it, it kind of got to you after a while. Mm -hmm. So, I know that's how it got to me. And then my brother was being drafted. He was going in. Uh, my older brother was being drafted, so I figured I'd go in with him. But when I went when I went to New York, uh, when I enlisted, the uh, f the sergeant there, whatever he was, he said, "Come in, sad, you'll be sworn in, sad, you'll leave one day." So, which I did, and my brother left the following. He left that week also. He left. I went in July 20th. He went in July 22nd. We met at uh, Camp Upton for one, just when he came in, and I left the next day. Um, now, did you uh, choose to go into the Air Corps? Or? Yes, that was my mm -hmm. that was my first. Now, choice. what did your brother go into? He, he went into uh, the field. He was in. He was uh, sent to Muskogee, Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. it, was a, it was a it was an all draft outfit, 
and he was a field artillery. He was in the field artillery. Uh -huh. okay. he, was, he was in uh, Mark Clark's Fifth Army, and I mean, you know, North Africa. Uh -huh. and, no, uh, no. Where did you go for your training? Uh, from uh, Camp Upton, I went to Keesler Field, Biloxi, Mississippi. Uh -huh. Now, was this your first time really away from home? Uh, no, I'd been out to California for oh. I, when I was before that. I think about maybe a year and a half before the war, I was out to California with my aunt. I had left an aunt that lived out there. Mm -hmm. And I went out and I stayed with her for a year. Mm -hmm. and, but the army was the next, you know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <coughs> the longest time away. And I was there at Kiesel Field, and then from Kiesel Field went to um, um, Salt Lake City. And then from there to Washington State. College, we had they had a radio school there, and I took radio and gunnery at Washington State. Mm -hmm. And from there, I went to uh, Tucson, Arizona, Davis Monson Field, <coughs> and our group that's where our group was formed the 389th Bomb Group. Okay, um, now this is that where you pick. A crew where you were yes. assigned to a crew. Did you stay together for we the did. entire time? Yes, we did. Mm -hmm. um, matter of fact, we just had a uh, a reunion in Salt Lake City for the uh, Ploesti raid, the 60th anniversary, mm -hmm. and there were four of us there at the, from the crew that was still mm -hmm. that's still alive. All right. Um, now I noticed you were you were in 24s, B24s. Is that what you trained in? Yes. How'd you like to be 24? I liked it. I liked it. I didn't fly anything else before that, yes, but, I, right. but I liked the 24. Yeah, you know. yeah. Okay. Where did you pick up your plane? In um, 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 uh, Lowry Field. Okay. Lowry Field, Denver. No, was it a new? It was a new one, yeah. yeah. Okay. Did you name it? No. Was it named? We didn't, we didn't have it that long. We named mm -hmm. it. And we lost it on our third mission, so. Oh, okay. uh, as a matter of fact, at this reunion, the navigator, we, we, we crash landed in Sicily. We got shot over Italy and we crash landed in Sicily. And uh, the navigator was the only one that ever took anything out of the ship. When we landed, we got out of it right away, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was the only one that took anything out, he took a clock out, a little clock, mm -hmm. and he gave it to me at this last reunion. And I just gave it to a clock man to have mounted. He's mounting it for me. It's, it's, it's only a little bit of a mm -hmm. thing, but it's, you know, yeah, yeah. it's something that nobody else took it <coughs> out. Yeah. We wanted to get out of it too fast. So where, after you picked your plane up, uh, where did you go? We went from, um, from Lowry Field. We, we went from Lowry to um, uh, uh, not, I, not, I know, It's okay if you. And then we went to Bangor, Maine. Mm -hmm. From there we went to Bangor, Maine, and then from Bangor, Maine to Newfoundland. Okay, so you flew to Northern. We flew over, you know. Mm -hmm. We uh, went to Presswick, Scotland, and then to our base in England. Mm -hmm. And we were there a few weeks, and, and then we went down to uh, North Africa. <clears throat> but our home base was England, but we went to North Africa, and and that's uh, yeah, we were there for about three months. Did you live in tents, or did you have? Yeah, <laughs> on the desert, Benghazi. Oh. When we when we went down. Uh, I remember they sent up a P-40 or something to direct us to where we were to land, and it was nothing but barren desert, I mean, absolutely nothing. And then we had to set up our tents and the whole bit, you know. So you had a dirt runway? And oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And locusts, so every locust that was, was, they were there in Africa, North Africa. Mm -hmm. uh, a, lot of, a lot of snakes and scorpions? And uh, the scorpions, yeah. Uh -huh. They were, they were, you know. But mostly, mostly scorpions and, and locusts. You know, mm -hmm. those things were about that big. Mm -hmm. Locusts. 
Now, did the entire crew stay in the same tent, or were the officers separate from the Yeah, the officers were separate. We had mm -hmm. like, it was like four in a tent. Mm -hmm. So, you know, they split them up, but there was four guys in each tent. So you flew your first mission out of North Africa? What yes. was your Crete. target? Crete was the Crete. first mission. Mm -hmm. and we, I think we lost one ship on that one. Mm -hmm. And then we went to... Um, a, th a second mission was re it was regular Calibre, uh, and then the third one was where we got shot down was mm -hmm. over regular Calibre. Were you shot down Marshall with, with we got flak? Hit right, flak. Okay. Flak. Got hit right over the target. Mm -hmm. uh, Were you able to drop your bombs or? Oh yeah, mm -hmm. we, we dropped it. was just, it, it seemed like simultaneously they went, you know. <clears throat> what kind of damage did the uh, hit? And we said the, the, the engines, two engines, mm -hmm. and uh, knocked the two engines out. And then we naturally started throwing stuff out, you know, lighting the plane, get rid of it. And uh, uh, thank, there were no fighters. We didn't hit any fighters that day. Mm -hmm. and, and so we managed to, you know, I think one of the sickest things is to see the formation pull away from you, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you're just hanging back there, you're at their mercy. Mm -hmm. But thank God there were no fighters that day. We didn't get hit by any fighters or anything. Um, and then we managed to get back to to Sicily. We got, and we landed and ate in a, in a, we don't know whether we were going to ditch or whether we were going to land, you know. And the pot, pilot spotted a little vineyard. And he put it down in there. We made a wheels down landing, but by this time we only had about one engine going, you know. Mm -hmm. And the uh, um, uh, they had taken the town <coughs> about an hour before we got there. Water there. Like, you have know, a glass of water yeah, there. For thank you. you. Yeah, they took the town about an hour. The Canadians had just taken the town about an hour. Oh, okay. So you. Before we landed. Sicily wasn't secured then at the no, time when you no, landed. No, no, no. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, I can remember as we were, um, we were picked up by Canadian, the Canadians. As a matter of fact, they didn't even recognize us as an American. So when we were when we got out of the plane, we, we were going to scatter, you know, and split up. Mm -hmm. And uh, now, did you realize you no. were landing behind friendly lines? We didn't, you, no, we you thought we were, sure. you know, mm -hmm. and. Uh, so that's why we were going to see everybody was going to take off, you know, split up. And they, as we got out and started, they started shooting. So we stopped and the pilot got, you know, he walked in, walked over to the, uh, he walked away from the ship and walked out. And then he saw that they were Canadians. And we saw him shaking hands with them. We knew we were okay, you know. But so many of the civilians there came out to the plane that had worked on the subway in New York, hmm. you know, and, and, and going back to Sicily, but they, so many of them came out to the plane, and I was the, the only New Yorker on the crew, mm -hmm. and, and uh, they said, oh yeah, me, me, me work in New York, me work in New York, you know, on the subway. So then we stayed with the Canadians, we went, they took us down and we stayed with them to the beach for a while, mm -hmm. a few days, and then we got a, um, on these LSDs to Malta, the British, and then from Malta there was a, we picked up a plane that, and flew back to our base. And the next, our next raid was the Ploesti raid, the low level raid on Ploesti. Mm -hmm. You want to describe that or? Fine. What was that like? And it was, uh, that was, that was a, one of the roughest ones, you know. That was a low level raid to begin with. And uh, it, you know, it was it was a raid that was really messed up. It really got screwed up royally. And uh, in what way do you? One of the groups went beyond the target, mm -hmm. didn't make the right turn, and when they realized they were going down into Bucharest, they, that they made a mistake. And all of this was radio silence. There was no, you know, and. Uh, Another group had gone over that target, so they came back. I can remember when our own group 
uh, the navigator saying to the pilot, hey, Bob, we're going, he said, we're making a wrong turn. And he said, well, what are we going to do? We have to follow him, you know. But then we corrected, and we, we were the youngest group there at the time on this raid. The, the 389th was the youngest group. And we, um, and we, we hit our target. We, I think we were the only group that really hit their target and destroyed the target. The other groups, and they were lost a lot of, we lost one of the fellows in our flight. Hughes, his name was Lloyd Hughes, and he was hit right over the target. And, you know, we were only like 100 to 150 feet off the ground, so there was no bailout or anything like that, and he was burning from nose to tail. And there were two, two people got out of it, how they ever did, I don't know, because we saw them crash, and they, you would never think anybody would get out of it. But that, we lost, I think, like 58 ships on that raid out of 178 was a lot. We lost a lot. I think that was probably one of the biggest losses at the time, you know. But that was, that was, uh, that was one of the tougher ones. Did your plane get hit at all? On no, we, we, we came out of it without a scratch. We got back to the base. As a matter of fact, we even, there was another fellow that was in our flight and we stayed alongside of him. He had one engine out. And we stayed with him, you know, we, by this time all the formations had been all messed up. I mean, it was, uh, someone went to Turkey, Cyprus, you know, and it landed that were some of the ones that were uh, really badly shot up, went, landed in Turkey. Mm -hmm. And that, that's when that was, that was one of the, uh, I think it was the only low-level low raid during the war, you know, of the war. Right. After that, they didn't, they didn't do that anymore. Mm -hmm. And only they, they figured the only plane could do it would be the B-24 at the time, you know. And we had 500-gallon uh, Bombay tanks in, in, the, uh, in the ships, you know, for extra fuel. Because <laughs> it was like 2,600 miles round trip. 14, almost 14 hours, you know, which is nothing compared to what the B-29 said later on, you know. Um, were any, any of your missions at high altitude? Oh yeah, most of them were, you know, 18, 20,000. Mm -hmm. uh, a few of them, we, uh, we did one to Norway, and that was, uh, I like, 14 or 15. But we, we got hit going in, and uh, uh, we got hit by Ju 88s on the way in. Mm -hmm. And it was a German airfield, and uh, it, was, it was on a Sunday. And so the Ploessi raid was also on a Sunday. Um, but we, we, you know, we, we, we did a pretty good job on the target. We got, uh, it was a, it was a um, the repair shop for for German aircraft. Now, were most of your raids out of uh, North Africa, Italy area, or no? We we um, I would say we did probably six or eight out of North Africa, mm -hmm. and then we went back to England to our our own, you know our original base, and then from England we went to. Uh, uh, we were there about a month, I think, and then we went back down to Tunis, and we uh, we pulled a couple of raids out of Tunis, and that was it. And then we went back to England and finished in England, you know, out of England. No, you were part of the Eighth Air Force. Yeah, we were the Eighth Air. Originally, we were the Eighth Air Force. Okay. And we were on what they call detached service to the Ninth, you know, mm -hmm. the first time down in North Africa. Where were, what were most of your targets? Uh, you did 25 missions, um, what were most of your targets? Uh, marshalling yards, aircraft plants, uh -huh. uh, uh, shipyards. Um, I, w I would say predominantly, you know, aircraft plants, shipyards, and um, like Bremen, Willem Schauben. Um, 
keel. I, I, I most of my, most of you know whatever. Uh, yeah, I think that, yeah, that was most of the targets. Mm -hmm. Did you have uh, many encounters with uh, German aircraft? Oh yeah, yeah. You know, uh, when we were down in North Africa, we didn't have a the uh, you know an escort mm -hmm. per se. Uh, and we only got that later on when we came back to England when we started getting the, you know, when the P-47s were, um, uh, we got a better escort out of them. And then when they started going long range, you know, but they were only for a short range for a while. And then they started putting these wing tanks on and things and they, you know, and then the P-51s came over. But I was almost finished by the time the P-51s were there. I think I had probably you know, half my missions done, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, and they, when they came in, and, and they changed the whole scope, the whole thing, the P-51. Do you wear a flak jacket all the time? No, never wore it. Never. I I I was up on a flight deck. Mm -hmm. I used to I used to wear my uniform, I, I a long johns, and then we had an electric suit. Mm -hmm. It was like a long john. It was right. one piece. Yeah. I used to wear that. And I would, uh, and I didn't wear the gloves. And I, I would wear that. And then I'd wear my uniform over that, and uh, and the you know the uh, heavy wool jacket, and the uh, um, I didn't wear. I wore my GI shoes with with the boots, mm -hmm. with the fur lined boots, mm -hmm. because the fellows used to come back that were shot down and escaped, and they said one of the main the most important things to have is your shoes. Mm -hmm. If you don't, you know, and those electric shoes that we had were like yeah. extremely yeah. thin. They were very, there was nothing to them. And you couldn't walk around a block with them, you know. Mm -hmm. And, and he, anybody that ever came back out of these like, always said, make sure you have good shoes. You know, those were, that was the most important thing. Did you ever wear a sidearm? We had them, but I mean, you know, once, I think once or twice we went at the beginning, and then mm -hmm. after that we never we had 45s, mm -hmm. but we never never took it on a flight or anything like that. You know, I think at the beginning we probably did, but after that, uh, I don't know. It just got to be another nuisance. That's all. We didn't bother with it. Did you ever decorate your jacket at all? And no, no, no. And the funny part of it is one of the fellows that. Uh, used to hang out in the chaplain's office a lot. There was a friend of mine, he worked there, he was a chaplain's assistant. As a matter of fact, we still, I just got a book from him yesterday. And he did all the painting of all the jackets. And, mm -hmm. You know, he used to paint it on all. And I, I just never had mine done, so, you know, just never, just never did it. Mm -hmm. What were your relationships like with the native people? Did, did you have much contact in North Africa with with local people at all? No, the only, you know, we did with the trading, and, mm -hmm. you know, we, for, for uh, uh, vegetables, and not vegetables, but anything, you know, fruits and stuff, mm -hmm. cigarettes, that was our mm -hmm. biggest trade, you know. Mm -hmm. We used to get, uh, at that time, we got seven packs of cigarettes a week. You got two old goals, and, and the rest would be your favorite brand, you know. And then they would, uh, and, and they, after a while, he, the Arabs wouldn't even take the old goals. They didn't want them either. <laughs> they got to be real fussy, you know. But that was that was the only contact we ever had with them. Mm -hmm. How about in England? Did you have much? No, not really. You know, other than you know going to the pubs and mm -hmm. stuff like that, or London or something. But other than that, no, no. What do you think um, was your most dangerous mission? Well, I I think the Ploesti was mm -hmm. that was one of them. That was the probably had to be the worst. Mm -hmm. And then we had uh, this uh, one to Norway was another one. That was a that was another rough one because we had the fight. You know, fighters going in, and uh, and then they just wouldn't wouldn't go away. Mm -hmm. That's all. You know, and I think we lost our group lost about three ships that day. And then there were other groups. There, were, there weren't that many. There was only probably about two or three groups on the raid itself, you know. Mm -hmm. 
When did you leave the European theater? I left in June of 44. Mm -hmm. I, as a matter of fact, I was three days out of New York when the invasion of Europe took place mm -hmm. on my way home. Mm -hmm. I finished uh, my missions in February of 44. And, uh, and then we stayed there three months, and then, and then I left there in June. Okay, now you were in service until September 45. Uh, where did, what did you do for the rest of it? was down in, in, uh, in Charleston, at Air Base, with training B-24 crews, radio procedures and stuff. Mm -hmm. and, then, and then the ATC took over after a while. And, uh, we would train the pilots that were coming back from overseas, you know, Voinker and stuff like that. It was just radio procedures. Mm -hmm. That was it. Did they ever start training you for uh, Japan? No, 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 no. I think it, there was so many crews. We had a lot of, you know, down in Charleston, and uh, and they were all B twenty four crews, you know, because that was mostly what was. I think that was in Japan with 29s and not 24s. Yeah, yeah. 17s, I don't think there were that many of them. Yeah, no, I don't think so. Um. Okay, um, do you recall uh, where you were in your reaction when you heard about the death of President Roosevelt? I was down in Charleston, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Did you have a reaction uh, at all? To that? Um, I don't think anything like any of the other, like Kennedy or anything mm -hmm. like that, nothing like that at mm -hmm. all, you know. Everybody felt that, you know, it was a loss, but uh, at that stage, at this stage of the game, it was, you know, this was about 45, did he die? Yeah, 45. yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I, re I don't remember any real, mm -hmm. you know. What was your reaction when you heard about the end of the war in Europe? Uh, was happy for it, you know. Mm -hmm. And as a matter of fact, the, my group came back to Charleston to the base that I was stationed at when they came back. And I met them all, you know, I met a lot of the original crews there. Mm -hmm. Not the original crews because, you know, the turnover was pretty great. Yeah. And uh, I met a lot of the, the you know, um, permanent party people. As a matter of fact, the first time I went to um, London, we had gotten a, uh, we had gotten paid for, <coughs> from being down, and we'd come back from North Africa. We got a three-day pass. We went to London, and I lost my wallet. I bought a wallet in, in, uh, I think Cairo or something, for the Egyptian money because it was a little bigger than ours, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, the first time I went to London, went to we went uh, this. The other fellow that, uh, my, my buddy, Hank, we went to, um, we went to London and I, we go to the hotel and I, I, I don't have my wallet. It was, I either picked or something. But when the, when the group came back from overseas, I was in a PX down in Charleston and one of the mail clerks, he called, he said, Hank Tahalski, and I, couldn't imagine who, you know. And he said, I got something of yours. And he got, he gave me the wallet that he said, it's over my back, so come over, you know. And it was the wallet that I had lost in, in, uh, in uh, London. Yeah. How did you get that? How did they have that? I, I don't, they evidently sent it back to the base huh. because it had the, uh, uh, you know, it had identification mm -hmm. in it and all that. <laughs> uh, Money in there? No. <laughs> What were the odds of that happening? <laughs> yeah, right. I mean, I still have the wallet, believe it or not. I kept uh -huh. it, you know. But I, I got married in Denver, by the way. And that's where I got married in uh, Lowry Field. When we were in the station there. But before you left? Before. Oh, okay. I got married June, May 16th. And then I think June 16th, we were in, down in, uh, in, in, in North Africa. Was, was your wife able to meet you in the, in the South when you no, came no, back? No, we down in, in Charleston, yeah. Charleston. She was down in Charleston. Mm -hmm. Um, do you remember where you were in your reaction when you heard about the dropping the atomic bombs? As a matter of fact, I came home for the weekend. I came home, uh, I came up from Charleston, and my friend Doyle was going to meet, came with me. And all, 
you know, and then we got also got telegrams to go back to the base. Uh, and we, and, and I think we just got there like today, and the next day we had, uh -huh. we had to leave to go back to the base. So uh, I think everybody was happy about that. We didn't know what it was all about, uh -huh. though, you know. Right. Uh, nobody, nobody had any idea, how, you know, what it was. Well, you know, what a horror it was. But they were glad to see the end of war was over, though, you know, in Japan. Uh -huh. So where were you when you were discharged? Where? We got out of Mitchell Field. Mitchell. Okay. From Charleston and we went to, from, uh, to Mitchell Field. Uh -huh. Did you make use of the GI Bill? Oh yeah, oh yeah. I went to school. Yeah. Um, when I first got out, I, I worked for the lighting company for five years. Uh -huh. Did you ever use the 5220 Club? Oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> Max it out? <laughs> I think when when we first got out, there used to be about six or eight of us would be down at a, a certain bar in Roslyn, and we'd be all, you know all fighting the war all over again. <laughs> but we and we we used the fifty through twenty, you know. Mm -hmm. I used that, and uh, and then I went to school. I went to um, uh, bombing school in the city, and I used the GI Bill. Mm -hmm. And I was, I think we got 120 bucks a month for, uh, 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 besides the, you know, the school. Mm -hmm. I think it was 120 dollars a month. Okay. Um, did you join any veterans organizations? Yeah, I belong to the VFW. Okay. Are you active or? Pardon? Are you active? No, I'm not active in it, but I belong mm -hmm. to the one okay. in Albertson. There's one in Albertson. You belong to the 8th Air Force Association? Yes, right yes. Okay. Second Air Division, mm -hmm. yeah, and we also the Eighth Air Historical Society. Okay, and then they have now they have a DFC uh, um, society also, you know, which we have. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you you oh, okay, see that. All right. Um, did you ever attend any USO shows? Oh yeah. Can you recall who you saw, or was I well, named? Down in, in, in North Africa, we had um, Jack Benny. Um, yeah, yeah, he was. He was in North. Uh, Jack Benny was in North Africa, and then um, Dinah Shaw, uh, Red Skelton. These were all at different places. Mm -hmm. uh, Dinah Shaw and Red Skelton, I think I saw here, and Benny and Cagney was in, also in, in North Africa. And uh, as a matter of fact, Jimmy Stewart was in the next group to ours. He was in the 445th bomb group. Mm -hmm. Did you ever get to see and him? And he flew. He, he flew with our group, but I never, you know, I never got to see him or anything mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. But he flew with our group a few times. Out of, you know, this was in England. Right, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, did you have any questions? Mm -hmm. well, how do you think uh, your ser time in service affected or changed your life? Well, it, it, it's something I never regretted, I'll tell you. I, I, you know, I, I think it's the greatest experience of, that I have, in, in, uh, you know. Mm -hmm. I, I c couldn't compare anything else to it. it, it was. Um, I figured I I went into it on my own, and anything that happened, it was my own doing. It wasn't, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. it wasn't anything that was forced on me. Um, whatever the consequences, that was it, you know. But I never regretted it, never for a minute, never for a minute. I would turn around and do the same thing today if I, you know, if I had to. I really would. Mm -hmm. I never regretted it. And you stayed in contact with yeah. some that you served. We just with. had a uh, a reunion in Salt Lake City mm -hmm. of the um, 60th anniversary of the Blue Yes, you mentioned that too. And, uh, and did you stay in contact with any members of your crew? Uh, I do. Yeah. All oh. the way through. Always. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 As a matter of fact, I think I was the only one on the crew that kept 
in touch with everybody that I knew where they were, and mm -hmm. you know. And uh, this, this, as I say, our tail gunners in, in California, the uh, navigators in Chicago, and the co-pilots in uh, Tucson, and uh, I'm here in New York. Okay. So I keep in touch with him very much, you know. Right. Okay, well, thank you very much yes, for your thank interview. You. Oh, my pleasure. It was in, in you know, developed out in North Africa. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, it just, you know, it just never went away. And I used to have a, a, a problem with my neck, you know, and, and which they said was related to that. And, and other than that, you know. Was was that the result of the crash you were? Th no, <laughs> no. You know, you wouldn't believe for what the way the, the plane was that not one person got a scratch. You could not believe that. I mean, that we landed the way we landed and everything else, and not not one person even got a scratch. I mean, they might have, you know, had a little soreness, but uh -huh. other than that, there was no. Uh, no, 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 no one got any, any bit, you know, injuries or anything like that, lost an arm or anything like that. Okay. Any, anything else you'd like to tell us about that you can think of? Any funny experiences? Well, I got one thing, <laughs> when we were, when we were in Sicily, when this, one day we were, uh, uh, we were, Scrounging around, we just and we had we had picked up rifles, hand grenades by the thousands. I mean, we we had them, you know, we like stockpiling them. I don't know what we thought we were going to do with them, but we also came upon a a, a wine cellar, and uh, so we we met a guy. A, a, a paratrooper that had been shot down the night before, an American paratrooper. He was shot down a couple of nights before that. And this guy was out of it. I mean, he was completely gone. And uh, he's walking around with a, with a uh, submachine gun. And we didn't have any, any guns other than what we picked up, you know, but we had them all in a little stash. So we went to this wine cellar, and the man comes out, and we and they had big huge iron gates on it. And half of it was in you know, in the ground, built mm -hmm. in the ground. And uh, I would say it was almost as long as this building here. It was good to, so we asked him for some wine. And he said he didn't have the key to the gate, you know, he couldn't let us in. So this paratrooper took the gun and he was gonna put it gonna shoot the the lock, and the guy gets between the gate and the, and the um, like, you know, the, the, the gate here, gets between the gate and the, and the lock. And he went like that, oh, oh, oh. And then, and then he got the key. <laughs> well, we got wine, and I don't think I ever got as drunk as I did. All of us, we, I mean, we just, we got canteens, we got cans, we filled up, uh, cans of, uh, with all the canteens and everything, filled it up with wine and went back to this little, pl we were on the beach with the Canadians, we were staying on the beach. And uh, every, every one of us, I mean, just got completely wiped out. Uh, in all my years, I never, never got that drunk, I don't think ever. And uh, the next morning, like I say, it was, it was hot there too, this was in July, and it was hot. And the next morning, we're, we're still laying on the beach, and all of a sudden this plane goes over. And we, were, we got up, and we were pushing this British uh, truck that stuck in the sand. And we're pushing him, and this plane comes over. And it was a German, it was a German plane. Had we, had it had guns or anything, it looked like an observer, you know. Mm -hmm. It, it would it would have wiped the whole bunch of us right out, but it just what flew right over and it was only about maybe 500 feet in the air, you know. And here we are trying to push this thing, and we're still suffering from the, uh, you know, the, the, the day before with the wine. But that.
that was that, I think that that was the uh, one of one of the craziest things that ever happened was there was that wine business, with, and I mean they were huge, huge barrels of wine, and we 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 got our share of it, you know. Sure. <laughs> um, and we were, we were picking up all the Italian rifles, and 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 the uh, pilot had enough senses. He, I said. You know, I think you guys better put these rifles down for a while till you, till you sober up or whatever. <laughs> Did you ever take any of them back with yeah, you? Yeah, we brought them back to, to uh, North Africa with us. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but that was it. We left them down here when we, you know, we never took them back to England. Mm -hmm. Took them back to North Africa. We even had hand grenades, hand grenades we took. I mean, we just carried them around like they were marbles or something, you know. Never realized it, how, <laughs> what could have happened with them. Mm -hmm. Oh. Okay. Oh. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Oh.